Hollywood TV presents Four Star Review with a new star for each week in the month. Ed Wynn. Danny Thomas. Jimmy Durante. Jack Carson. All brought to you by the makers of the finest instruments of home entertainment, Motorola. Boy, what a night. Snow, brisk air, bright, clear stars. Yep, Christmas is really on its way. And for a more joyous Christmas, give the brightest gift star of them all. Motorola for you. Motorola's clock radio, for instance. A star performer all the way. Beautiful, compact, this amazing instrument turns itself off after you've gone to sleep, rouses you gently with a song, even starts your coffee or toast. And here's a wonderful portable radio star, the Motorola Playmate. Take it with you wherever you go for indoor and outdoor fun. Made of sturdy steel, yet amazingly lightweight, it picks up even faraway stations clear as a bell. You'll find the same sparkling performance in this stunning portable, the Jewel Box. Another star gift value, Motorola's town and country. On AC, DC, or battery, it's a star for tonal quality and smart styling. So, as Christmas draws near for the gift star of first magnitude... Your eye tells why. The very best buy is... Motorola for you. Motorola for you. Our star has been delayed. I don't know what's happened, but he will be here any moment. Meanwhile, in the tradition of our particular business, as they say, on with the show as we present the Marie Antoinette Sextet in their version of the Minuet. My award stuff. It must be time for my show, and I'm not made up yet. Will you uh, uh, hustle it up, please? Please. <clears throat> hey, Veronica. Huh? What's with it? Hustle it up, Mrs. Will you hustle it up, please? What are you, a big movie star? Somebody come on, oh, hustle no, it no, up, please. I just please. want to get made up. You I ain't sticking that puss in front of no NBC camera until I okay it. Well, that's all right with me. I just want to get made up. Look what right. happened to you last week. Your face come out looking like a pig's knuckle with ears. <laughs> I seen your puss on television last week. Oh, it was like looking into a butcher's window. Well, after all, that was my first show. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. You was the slob of the week. <laughs> listen, Carstairs. Carson, please. Yes, there, listen. Carson. This is out of my department, you understand? But I'm going to give you a little tip. What's that? This ain't Hollywood. This ain't the cinema. This is a whole no memeum. A what? Memeum. <laughs> I like guys with new mediums. Yeah. <laughs> Got a fair start here in television, a whole new medium. I'm going to give a little tip, see, for you talking fellas. 
most important thing to have is good fishing. See? Fishing? Fishing, yeah. Because uh, you can't get no place in the medium unless you've got good electrocution. Electric? <laughs> oh, dishing. Dishing, I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah. All right, let's get a load of the map here. We'll see if we can wake up. Uh. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, you Oh, this is murder. <laughs> That's too much for one man. Fellas! What, what's going on? I can't look at that alone. Fellas! I'd like you to meet Mr. Carstairs. Yes. Mr. Carson, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Carson. Hiya, fellas. I, 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 I will... I don't think they like me. They like you. They like you. Come here, Carstairs. You want to watch out for a little fella in the end, Virgil, huh? Very nervous, yes. very high strung. Uh -huh. And above all, don't mention his first wife. Oh, I don't want to mention anything. All I want to do is to get made up. Oh, Look, yes. I can explain. Fellas, it's, with me, it's a very simple job. All I need is a little Max Factor pancake. Oh, 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 what are you trying to do? Have, have, have Virgil deliberately destroy himself with what you're tormenting? What did I right say? Right off! You mentioned his first wife. His first... All I said was something about pancakes. Oh, so was something about pancakes. That's where he met his first wife, in the window of Childs, flipping pancakes. <laughs> well, how was I to know sure, that? Oh, how was I to know that? What do you care about little people? That's how you get your kicks kicking little people. Why don't you go to a doctor and get yourself psychoalkalized? <laughs> Alkaline? Yeah. I'll apologize. Just for a it. second. I want to check here. See if Virgil's okay. Oh, your Virg, baby, Virgie, baby. Oh, your Virg. Oh, Virgie, baby. Oh. He's okay. You could have fooled me. Well, watch what you say. I don't want to say anything. All I want to do is to get made up. Fair enough. Look, fellas, what I said is all I need is a little pan. <laughs> 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 Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you're catching up, guys. Yeah, sit down, let's give you a once over. All right. <laughs> All right. Eyebrow pencil. Eyebrow pencil. Thanks, nurse. Shadow. I shadow. Wait a second. We need a whole overall picture. <laughs> Camera perspective. <laughs> there will be no laughing while I'm working. Dolly <laughs> in. Mark that. scratching the cyphers here. I think it's coming along pretty good. False eyelashes. Now, wait, wait, wait. I'll go along with anything, but no false eyelashes. You gotta have them. Them lights don't pick up nothing. Your eyes look like two flies in a blob of dough. <laughs> I don't care what they look like. I'm not gonna wear any false eyelashes. No false eyelashes. That's right. Virgil likes them. But I don't care what... <laughs> I don't care what Virgil likes. I'm not going to wear any false eyelashes. Are you through? Yeah, I'm through. Turn them loose. Oh, no, 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 anything you guys say. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make up a zebra for the next show. Okay, let's get a look at this now. <laughs> Go to wake, fellas. <laughs> Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, you're a dreamer. And your father's nose is like your mother's ear. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, you're a dog. Cut. Okay, cut. <laughs> Don't you think that's a little too much? Uh, them lights don't pick up nothing. <laughs> I guess you guys know what you're talking about. I gotta find out what time it is. Turn on the television set. We don't want to see what's going on. Mr. Carson, let's get going here. Yeah. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa,
that. Sorry the show is not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! That's my show! I gotta get there to the, to the uh, International Theater, Columbus Circle. Give me a taxi. Oh, wait a second. It's a theater eye. You never get a taxi. Take the subway. What do I know about subways? I came from California. I've never been to subway. Very right. right. simple. You get down here, you leave Radio City. Three minutes by subway. Go Three ahead. minutes yeah. to Radio City? Okay, get where's my bag? Right here. Bag right here. Right here. This isn't my bag. This belongs to Betty Keene. She must have took yours. Take hers. Go on. How, how, do, I, how do I get out of here? I threw that door. Right over right here. Okay. Whoa! Guys, yeah, I got out of here. I got out of here. Columbus Circle. <laughs> Pardon me, it's the next stop, Columbus Circle. what you think it is. This, you know, I, I have a television show. It's at the International Theater. This is just heavy makeup for television. Oh, okay? oh, I, 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 I thought you had it wrong. <laughs> I... <clears throat> I say this isn't my bag here. <laughs> Belongs to Betty Keene. I have to pick it up by mistake. She's on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like I thought it's television makeup, you know? Right? <laughs> minute, Before yeah. I came to television, I was in pictures. You've probably oh, seen me. <laughs> my name is Jack Carson. <laughs> 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 I'm folks and I don't... Say, conductor, when does the subway get to Columbus Circle? Never. <laughs> You're on a wrong train. I can't be on a wrong train. I gotta get to the International Theater in Columbus Circle. I'll tell you what you do. You get off the next stop, you get an E-train back uptown to 14th Street. Change to an F-train express to 34, take uh, the local and AR. Columbus Circle, huh? Columbus Circle? That's what I asked you about. Oh, no, no. For Columbus Circle. You get off the train, you take an E-train, you go e -train, back... E-train could be an X-train. You see, I'm from California. I've never been on the subway in my life before. <laughs> <laughs> California? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. We got it all figured out. It's very simple. We got it written down. Even a kid can understand it. How's it go? Is all you got to remember is this. What's that? To learn to ride the subway right, the E train goes to Jackson Heights. Mm -hmm. The F train will provide the means to go to Forest Hills and Queens. Mm -hmm. The Bronx Express you must enter with force if you happen to live in the Grand Concourse. <laughs> but remember this. If you're a yokel, don't get on an express if you want a local. Pretty? Yeah, it's got to catch it. <laughs> All right! <laughs> well, last time on the right train, I can take off this makeup. <laughs> Da -da -da. <laughs> 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 
Well, now, Sue, get the Columbus Circle here. I, I guess there aren't... Madam, you take my seat here. It's good. Circle. Look, stop the subway. I'll get out right now. Can you swim? No, oh, why? We're going under the river. What? Oh, Brooklyn, I can't. I can't go to Brooklyn. I... Snooky, 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 You know anything about these subways? Snooky, snooky, snooky. Miss, I say, do you know anything? What do you want? Get out of here. <laughs> Pardon me. Do you, uh, you know anything about these subways? Subways? No. I've been traveling in these subways for 35 years. Uh -huh. Every morning I go to work, I go into the subway, I fall asleep. I'm mm. very tired. Every night I've been coming home 35 years, going to the subway, very tired, I fall asleep. Must get monotonous. Can't huh? keep awake. Mm, I understand the that. same stations, the same ads, the same faces. <laughs> Your face looks familiar. You're Jack Carson. Yeah, that's right. You're yeah. my favorite. No kidding. How do you like this? I'm supposed to be on my television show. Here I am in a subway going to Brooklyn. I missed your first show. I was, Did I you was, rent it? I was sleeping in the subway. She was a kind of... <laughs> I got a kick out of it. Listen, we got a lot of time. We're going under the river. You want me to tell you about it? Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll keep me awake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will. I kept a lot of people awake last night. We did it. Well, anyway, you know, NBC has put on these, these eight big uh, comedy shows. They got four Sunday nights and four Wednesday nights. So I happen to be one of the, the Wednesday night group. Well... These, they've been a big extravaganza <laughs> so far. So I thought for a switch, it might be a good idea. If we, if we didn't have such an extravaganza, it, oh, actually, here's what happened. You'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> you see, Motorola, <clears throat> pardon me, Motorola gave uh, NBC a certain amount of money for four television shows, you see? So the first show was Ed Wynn, the second show was Danny Thomas, the third one was Jimmy Durante, the fourth show was mine. Now, I, <clears throat> are these shows supposed to have... <laughs> but by the time they got to me, they spent so much money that there was no budget on my show, you see? <laughs> In fact, I wound up owing NBC $60. <laughs> we started the show, just a shot of me on the stage saying, what do you mean NBC ran out of money? And then I came forward and explained to the people what we did. Well, and I, did, I didn't have a regular orchestra, you see. I, I had, I had a, a best Arabian trio and an Arabian sink, which of course was just a joke. <laughs> then I, I had a fight with the stagehands. See, I fought the stagehands. <laughs> 20 minutes into the show, I sang a song. But it was not really a song. It was an NBC 50 Cent tour going through, you see? But there was a cute song, it was called Daddy's Little Boy. It was something like this. You're the end of the rainbow, my pot of gold. You're Daddy's little boy, 
to have and hold. A fresh him is what you are. Your mommy's bright and guiding star. You're the spirit of Christmas. I love it in it. I love it in it. Avenue. You don't get off at Myrtle Avenue. I told you, Flatbush. Flatbush Avenue. Flatbush is what you want. All right, I'll wait for Flatbush. Then. can't be Betty King. We both can't be lost in Brooklyn on the same night. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Carson. Look, Don't I... go away. I want to be on your show tonight. i got to find Sullivan Street. Now, please, Mr. Carson. What? Listen, Mr. Carson. Dear Mr. Carson, adorable Mr. Carson, uh -huh. please listen to my story. Well, i got to find Sullivan. Kind Mr. Carson, effervescent Mr. Carson, you hold the key to my glory. I didn't know. Oh, you've seen me in a show or two for Billy Rose and Andre New. As an ingenue, you know I was the best. So please don't think me cynical when I say I've reached the pinnacle. I'm ready, Mr. Carson. I've progressed. I've passed my final test. I gotta find Sullivan's. I just got off the road with Bill Spatelli. What's good enough for him is good enough for you. I spread joy in Kalamazoo, and each boy in Buffalo said I'm the friendliest gal in local 802. That is a union. I made such a hit with Bill Spitalny. I'll admit that for short I was allowed to call him Smith. But I quit, although the dough was good, and every week I got my check. A girl wants more than just a slide trombone around her neck. So, Mr. Carson, I repeat, I'm tired of songs, soft and sweet. Mr. Carson, don't go away. Just look what I learned today.
must be big hockey country around here. <laughs> Gee, I gotta phone NBC and tell them where I am. Well, I've been held up by... Oh, boy, am I in luck. There's a Motorola dealer over there. Motorola, Motorola, you're a dolphin. And your nose is just as good. Oh, what a... Right. Uh, pardon me, sir. Could you tell me how to get to the subway on Sullivan Street? Sullivan Street, yeah. You go oh, right... Wait, 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 wait a minute. I gotta see what's happening to the Jack Carson television show. Sure thing. I gotta get back there. Did Look, you get how do I get picture? the Sullivan Did Street? Did you get that picture? That's a Motorola television set. I know it's a Motorola. How do I get you the Sullivan? You know why only Motorola can give you a bright, big, even, clear, 19-inch picture like that? Certainly you I see do. The yeah. You see the face? Wise guy knows everything, huh? Well, I know everything there is to know about a Motorola television set. Oh, you do? Certainly. You this should be rich. Tell me, shout ahead. Why is the Motorola television set <laughs> The easiest one to tune in. Why? Yeah. Because Motorola's the only set that has this new automatic station selector. <laughs> automatic station selector. <laughs> That's what <laughs> That's the automatic tuner. <laughs> That's the automatic station selector. So what? It's only the dial that's connected with the new Motorola RF tube. Oh, this is common. Ah, uh, what tube, squirrel brain? The RF tube. <laughs> Always the wise guy in every crowd. <laughs> RF tube. That's what I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at it. That's an RX tube. X, X, like you sign your name. <laughs> RX tube, eh? <laughs> oh, this is pitiful. What's alongside of the RX tube, huh? Only the... The RF tube, like I said, read it! RF! Like in Foolish, which is what you sound like. Oh, I love these guys with the one-inch brain and a 19-inch mouth. <laughs> you know so much, Mr. Pigeon Puss? Tell me one thing. Why is the Motorola set got such a steady pitch? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Just a minute, I'll tell you. Because Motorola's got the best... <laughs> the best automatic reflector control in the market, that's why. What about the amplifying system? What about the amplifying... This one's on me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the amplifying system... <laughs> I'll be right. A little tough, yeah, huh? but... <laughs> Only the best in television, I know. You hear some salesman. Yeah. You don't even know the sales points. Not one word about Motorola's furniture style cabinet. I don't know the sales points. That's what I said, Shouterhead. Motorola's got the finest construction in the world. Motorola's the only TV set that won a 1950 Fashion Academy Award. You get a bigger, brighter, clearer, finer picture with Motorola TV automatically. Your eye tells you why. The very best buy as Motorola TV. Motorola TV. Motorola oh, okay, okay, TV. okay, look, look, look. I got a phone, NBC. You got a phone? Certainly, I got a phone. A best little phone in Brooklyn. Fine, can I use it? No. Why not? Because... Because... Because it's out of order. That's oh, fine, that's swell. I gotta get in touch with NBC and find out how my show's going. What station was that? NBC. Wait a minute, wait a minute. After all we've done to it, you better tell me it's gonna work now. The Motorola, ain't it? How do you like that? Jack, will you please hurry up? These kids are dying up here. Look, I gotta get back there. Where can I find a phone? You're so smart, wise guy, find one for yourself. All right, I will. I'll get a policeman. Just remember one thing. What? You got a bigger, brighter, clearer picture with Motorola TV. Motorola TV. Motorola TV. I heard you. Okay. <laughs>
Then look, can you tell where I can find a phone? Well, I'm sorry, sir. We're only here in Brooklyn for this one night. Wouldn't you like to listen to Professor Minkus? Yeah, I'd love to, but I, I haven't got the time. I've got to find a phone. I'll, I'll see you later. You're going to enjoy Professor Minkus tonight. Up, huh? Okay, Agnes, I got a surprise for you. Surprise, I got a fellow for you. Ooh, stop howling into the phone. <laughs> no, his name is Stanislaus, and he's from a very fine family. Mm -mm. I didn't get his last name. The pool room was too noisy. <laughs> so all I know is his name is Stanislaus, and he's bringing the potato salad. <laughs> no, he's never met you. He's never met you, Agnes. He just got out. <laughs> and look, Agnes, this is his first night out with a woman in 10 years, so tonight you got no excuses. <laughs> no, it's a small party. Just you, me, Emma Lou Fink, and Ramona Holtzmeyer. You're not kidding. In the newsreels, I've seen better-looking packs chasing foxes. I know they're beasts, Agnes, but this is my part, and for once, I'm going to be the best-looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought we ought to try to dress this party up tonight. So let's lay off the old army clothes, huh? Yeah. What? Your hairdo? What's the difference as long as you cover it? The ball spot. What? Yeah, I'm waiting to hear from Ramona and Emma Lou right now. Mm hmm Oh, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> oh, I know that's for me. Will you hold this, please? Well, I want to make a phone. Oh, please, what? please, I haven't much time. Yes, I know it's for All me. Right. Will you tell Agnes I'll be right back? I'm Betty. You know, I wanted to make a phone. Emma Lou? Guess what? I want I got a fella for you. Emma Lou? Emma Lou. How do you like that? She fainted. Well, Go on, talk, talk, talk. I haven't much time. Uh, Hurry. Oh, Agnes, Agnes, Betty asked me to ask you to hang on. She's talking to Emma Lou. What? Jack. Jack Carson. Yeah, that's right, the same name as the movie actor. Look, I haven't got time to describe myself now. I want to make a phone call. Huh? Oh, well, I'm... I'm six feet two and a half. I've got blue eyes. Oh, oh, oh! Stop howling into the phone, will you? <laughs> Look, hang on, will you? I'm busy. Yeah, I know. I got worried, Mike. Wait a minute. I know that's for me. Will huh? you get this, please? <laughs> please get it for Look, me. I, I know it's a... for me because I was waiting for the call myself. 
Why is there? Will you tell Emma Lou her blind date's name is Mary, and I'll fill in in a minute. Uh, Ramona, oh, the party's all set. What are you wearing? Emma Lou, Betty's talking to Ramona. Your date's name is Murray. Oh. Now, look, if you'll hang up, I... You want? Wait a minute, I'll ask her. She wants to know what Murray looks like. Oh, tell her Mary's a dream. Tall, blonde, six feet, looks just like Gregory Peck. Tall, blonde, six feet, looks like Gregory Peck. Oh, yeah. Hello, Emma Lou. Murray's a dream. He's tall, blonde, six feet, and he looks like just like Gregory Peck. Looks like I finally got that gopher faced brother Murray of yours fixed up. <laughs> yeah, with Emma Lou. That's what she said. Looks just like Gregory Peck. Oh, that's a combination to run into in a dark street, is it? Well, hang on a second. Look, Emma Lou, if you'll hang up, I can make a call. Will you tell Ramona her date's name is Spud, and I'll fill in one minute. All right. Emma Lou? Ramona? Ramona wants to know what you're wearing. Look, uh, Betty's talking to Emma Lou. You, you, she asked me to tell you that your date's name is Spud, yeah. and she'll fill in later. <laughs> Ramona, will you, you do me a favor, please? Will you call up NBC and tell them that I'm going to be a little delay? <laughs> uh, what? No, no. No, 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 no. Not the National Biscuit Company. <laughs> no, no, the National Broadcast... Uh, look, never mind. If, if you just hang up, you Wait see, I second, can make Emma a call. Lou. Wait a minute. Will you tell Agnes that Emma Lou is wearing the green sequins and Murray is bringing the hot dog? Go on, hurry up. Emma Lou is wearing? Ramona, Spot is bringing the pizza, so it looks like you're stuck for the raw bread. Agnes is a jack again. Mm. Emma Lou is wearing the green sequins and uh, Murray's going to bring the hot dog. I'll see. I'll ask <laughs> Ramona! Ramona's bringing the rye bread, so would you bring the pickles? Agnes wants to know if you're going to go home from work, dress, and then go to the party. If you're going to take your clothes to work, dress there and go to the party. I'll ask her. I'll find out. Ramona! Emma Lou! Agnes said, would you please get the pickles, because she's already got the rye bread. Ramona says her boss doesn't want to use the office as a clothes closet, so could she bring her clothes over to your place and keep it in one of the files? I'll ask her. I'll tell her. <laughs> Ramona? Agnes? Emma Lou says the files are, are full that Murray's had the hot dogs in there for two weeks already. <laughs> so please, will you work it out? It's okay about the rye bread. What do you mean, what am I bringing? I'm bringing the box of white owls. And look, Agnes, for once, will you let the fellow smoke them too? <laughs> I'll ask her. I'll find out. Emma Lou? Ag, this is Jack again. <laughs> Ramona wants to know, can Spud buy your motorcycle to pick up the pizzas? Agnes wants to know, did she leave her corsage from last New Year's Eve in your icebox? <laughs> what do you say, you're going right from work to the party? Wait a minute. Will you ask Ramona where she's dressing? Yeah, sure, I'd be glad. <laughs> Agnes? Ramona. I just realized you can't come right to the party from work in those rubber boots and the fish scale. <laughs> I'll find out. Ramona, where are you dressing? Wait a minute, I'll find out. I'll ask you. Ramona? Emma Lou. Where are we going to dress? No kidding. Ramona wants to know where you're going to dress. Oh, I don't know. Wait a minute. Mm. Hey, you, where do you live? Where do I live? Mm. It's Park Sheridan in New York, room 201. Oh. Just ask for the key of 201 at the Park Sheridan. You can dress up there. Emma Lou, how do I know where you're going to dress? I, I... Tell her it's all settled. 201 at the Park Sheridan. Well, 201 at the Park... Wait a minute! Will you settle Spud in the hot pizza? Is that going on again? Agnes! Ramona! Bring your clothes up to 201 at the Park Sheridan. How is Spud going to bring the hot pizzas? Come right up, Agnes. <laughs> because I'm going to be there early to decorate the room. All right, I'll ask. I'll find out. Have a look. Ramona. Ramona wants to know when Murray picks up the hot dogs, can he also pick up the hot pizzas? Will you please ask your father to stop by the Park Sheridan Hotel and leave 100 pounds of ice at the desk? <laughs> Get the will call on it. I'll ask her. I'll find out. Oh. Ag Lou. Agnes. Ramona wants to know where the party's going to be. Oh, tell her it's 201 at the Park Sheridan. We're going to have a party up there. What? Yeah. The 
party's going to be at 201 at the park. Yeah, will you please ask Mary to bring the hot sauce up? Wait a minute. Yeah, with the steam cable. What? Yeah, I'll ask her. Wait a minute, I'll find out. Here, will you tell her how to get there? She doesn't know what's going on. Well, I don't, uh, Emma Lou. Mona? Uh, what? I'll find out. Yeah. Agnes wants to know how Spud is going to get the hot peaches across town. Well, listen, I really don't know. Why don't you talk to him yourself? Here, will you please talk to her? She doesn't believe me that you're supplying the liquor. I'm supplying it. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. What do you mean? You're not wearing the sequins because what? Hold it. Hold it just a minute. How do I know if the peaches are hot or cold? I don't... Who? Who's Murray? Well, how do I know if he can borrow the Essex? I don't even... Just a minute, please. No, 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 Agnes. It's not Stanislaus Essex. Okay, what? Who? When? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If, uh, if Murray could borrow the Essex, can he pick up Stanislaus and then go over and pick up the pizzas and then pick up Agnes? And then uh, to, get, to get the sequins over to Ramona's house in time so the spud can take the peaches down to the office where Murray's already waiting with the hot dogs. Can they all come to the party together? How should I know? It's your party. <laughs> <laughs> the, the officer. You again? Yeah, I, I just got to get out of Brooklyn. You still want to leave Brooklyn? Oh, my gosh, it hasn't got anything to do with Brooklyn, officer. I like Brooklyn, but it's just, just that I have to get back to New York. Don't you realize that Brooklyn is the most beautiful land in the whole world? Well, I, I must be honest and tell you that I I never thought of it that way. Look, at you can you can take your London with its Eiffel Tower, yeah. take your Paris with its Piccadilly, Switzerland with its Kremlin. Switzerland with its Kremlin? Sure. Brooklyn's got something that none of those places has got. What's that? Ah, oh, boy, I tell you, it's the smell of that river. The rattle of them garbage cans. <laughs> the tang of that wet laundry hanging out in back of the apartment. Yeah, say that is something, isn't it? Ah, it's like music. Listen. The flowers are blooming in Brooklyn. It's a sure sign that romance is king. The man in the moon is humming a tune. And love is a wonderful thing. It's spring, hey. Boys is chiping in the trees up way up there, hey. Between them silly little birds and all them bees, hey. They're laughing up my Brooklyn love song. Grow up, hey. And get wise and dish me up for kiss or two, hey. If a tree could grow in Brooklyn, so could you, hey. You're lousing up my Brooklyn love song. Get a load of romance, give me a chance. There's the moon, there's the river, golly gee. While we're making our plans, and I'm holding your hands, we, we can watch the barges throw the garbage out to the sea. Look at her, hey. Couple sitting on a stoop, they're pitching woo, hey. Lucky girl, you got the stoop right here with you, hey. And we're singing you a Brooklyn love song. Wait, down upon the Canarsie River, not far away.
Well, you still want to leave Brooklyn? Oh, my gosh, I must have been out of my mind, officer. Just like you said, it's really got something, you know? I'm beginning to love Brooklyn. Who wants to go back to New York? You know, this is... This has gotten to be sort of like a second hometown to me. I can give you sort of an idea of what I mean. Hail to thee, beloved Brooklyn, pride of sheep's head face. From the waters of Canarsie, fragrant breezes play. That's the tree that grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> You know, it's a lot of fun fixing things up for a really bright Christmas. Santa Claus costume, decorations for the tree, and don't forget the stars, especially the brightest gift star of them all. Motorola TV. Motorola TV, the only television set to receive the 1950 Fashion Academy gold medal. The hand-rubbed finish of this handsomely grained limed oak cabinet is a perfect match for all modern home settings. Note the custom-made door pulls, stunning cabinet lines, and gold grill of the lower doors. Choose the beauty star among television sets. Motorola TV. And when it comes to performance, Motorola gives you four glittering stars. One, Golden Voice AM Radio Entertainment. Two, Rich Tone FM Radio. Three, the famous Motorola Multiplay Record Changer with its amazingly true-to-life reproduction of hours of recorded entertainment, whether it be on 33 and a third RPM long playing records, the small 7-inch 45, or standard 78 RPM records. Here is extra three-star value that can't be matched. And look at the convenient roomy storage space for record albums. The fourth star... Motorola TV itself, a 17-inch rectangular screen that brings you bright, clear, big-picture entertainment. Just turn the set on, select the station. It's as simple as that. Yes, complete home entertainment in one magnificent Motorola cabinet. Your dealer will explain the wonderfully easy-to-buy long-range terms. Motorola also has many stunning consoles for you, like this smart new 17-inch model. Or you can get photo-perfect television on all of the compact 17-inch table models. So, this Christmas, remember, for the television set that gives you variety entertainment and four-star performance. Your eye tells why. The very best buy is... Motorola TV. Motorola TV.
TV. Ladies and gentlemen, that about winds it up for tonight. I just thought I'd like to explain to you the reason behind the whole show. Uh, the subway scene, the, the, uh, the whole thing was put together because all my life, since I've been in show business, I've wanted to come out like the other comedians and say a certain line. But I never wanted to do it unless I could say it legitimately. And so I feel now I can say legitimately, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater tonight. <laughs> oh, no, uh, we're running a little bit short. I brought out this coat for a particular... What's on your mind, bud? Mr. Carson? That's my name. Higher fits for flypaper. <laughs> <laughs> flypaper? Are you nuts? This is November. Sure. Are you one of them guys who waits until the summer to buy his flypaper? Well, I know. I never thought of it then. Now's the time to buy a flypaper. Later, all the good sticky stuff is gone. Uh-huh. And you gotta pay more. Yeah. You're right. I remember last summer it cost me a fortune for flypaper. Get your flypaper now because now the price is right. Be smart. Mister, you're right. Believe me. I know I'm right. Good. You got any with you? Got any what with me? Flypaper. Flypaper in November. What are you, nuts or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what do you know? It's time again. Here's the end of our show. It's time NBC Television. Mm -hmm.